ever feel like we're just on the edge of, you know, some big cosmic reveal, like the universe is about to spill its secrets? Oh, I know that feeling well. It's what keeps us looking up, right? Exactly. And you, our listeners, you feel it too. You sent in a ton of research on the Gulf Breeze UFO sightings, and I got to say, I'm kind of hooked already. It's a classic for a reason. Late 1980s Florida, a whole town sees weird lights, and then boom, Ed Walters drops these photographs. Expert speaker, this is one of those cases that just captures the imagination, right? Absolutely. Gulf Breeze, it wasn't just some isolated thing. It went on for years, imagine that. You're living your life in this quiet Florida town, and suddenly everyone's talking about UFOs, the whole town's buzzing, and then those photos hit, and it's like someone threw gasoline on a fire. Well, you know me, I'm a sucker for anything visual. And you actually sent some of Walter's photos along with the research. One detail that really stuck with me, he described the UFO as completely silent. Like even when it was right there over his house, no engine noise, no whooshing sound, nothing. It's eerie just thinking about it. Yeah, that silence, it's a common thread in a lot of these sightings. It adds to the mystery, doesn't it? Like whatever this thing is, it operates outside our normal understanding of physics. Totally. So are these photos the big smoking gun in the Gulf Breeze case? Is that what everyone points to? They were definitely huge in terms of making the case famous. But like with most things UFO related, there's a whole debate around them. Your research actually pointed out some of the arguments against the photos. Some researchers believe they see evidence of models being used and others question why the UFO looks different in different shots. Oh, interesting. So which is it? Are the photos legit or not? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And that's what makes this case so fascinating. We have to consider everything, not just the photos. We've got multiple eyewitness accounts, and you even highlighted one in particular, a police officer who reported seeing these objects. Oh yeah, I remember that. To have someone trained to observe, to be a credible witness, and they're reporting something this strange, it definitely adds another layer to the whole thing. For sure. And this wasn't just some shadowy figure in the distance. He went into specific details about the shape, the movements. It's pretty compelling stuff. It really sets this case apart from your typical grainy footage UFO story. Speaking of compelling, the material you sent, it dives into the media frenzy around Gulf Breeze. It's mm -hmm. almost like the media wasn't just reporting the news. They were shaping how people saw the whole thing. Yeah. It makes you wonder, did all that attention help or hurt the search for the truth. It's wild how relevant that whole media frenzy thing still feels, right? Like the speed of information now is insane. Social media, online forums, it's constant. But that push and pull between wanting a good story and needing proof, oh. that never gets old. It's timeless, isn't it? And you have to wonder, did all that media hype around Gulf Breeze make it harder to actually figure out what happened? Did it put pressure on the researchers? Right. Imagine trying to do serious research with cameras in your face and newspapers printing every theory you have. Yeah. It makes you think about objectivity, you know? It's a valid point. While the sources you sent don't come right out and say the media got in the way, you bring up a really interesting angle. Think about those researchers knowing that every word they said was going to be analyzed, celebrated, or maybe even made fun of on a national stage, that's a lot to deal with. Okay, so we've got this media frenzy going on. We've got compelling eyewitness accounts, even a police officer. And then there are these photos everyone's debating. You would think that with all of that, somebody somewhere would have solved it, right? Did any of the research you sent completely prove or disprove Walter's claims? And that, my friend, is where things take a very interesting turn. Because despite the sheer number of people who saw things, the photos, the investigations, there's no smoking gun. It's yeah. like the universe likes to keep us guessing. Remember in your notes you mentioned how some researchers actually tried to recreate Walter's photos. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. What happened? Did they look like the real deal? Get this. Some of them were scarily accurate. Almost too close for comfort, if you know what I mean. And there's more. One researcher, Dr. Bruce McAbee, you highlighted his work, took it even further. He used the same type of film as Walters to show how easily it could be faked. Hold on, are we saying that Ed Walters was trying to trick everyone? Was it all a hoax? Not so fast. And this is where it's important to zoom out and look at the whole picture. While some researchers were busy trying to debunk the photos, others were diving deep into those eyewitness reports. They did these super in-depth interviews, analyzed how consistent the stories were over time, tried to figure out if it was real or if maybe something else was going on. You know, that part always blows my mind a little, the power of suggestion, especially when you're talking about people trying to make sense of something unbelievable. Did any of that research give us any answers? It did, and this is where it gets even more interesting. 
Some researchers suggested that what people describe, particularly the silent movement of the UFOs, could have been influenced by what they already believed about UFOs. Like, if you already think a UFO should be silent, you might subconsciously block out any sound it makes. It's not even about lying. It's about how our brains try to make sense of things that don't make sense. So our brains are trying to fill in the gaps using what we already think we know about UFOs. It's like our own personal sci-fi movie playing in our heads. So after all that research, all those different angles, where did they land? Did anyone figure out a definitive answer? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And honestly, at least based on what you sent me, mm -hmm. no. There's no one explanation for what happened in Gulf Breeze that everyone agrees on. So we end up with this incredibly well-documented case, years of research, a million theories, and the mystery lives on. It's almost like the universe enjoys messing with us, which of course makes me think of all those other big UFO sightings. Roswell pops right into my mind, it's the OG UFO mystery, right? Pop culture can't get enough of Roswell. Do you see any connections between something like Gulf Breeze and a case like Roswell? Absolutely. And I think that's the perfect place to pick up right where Gulf Breeze leaves off. It's like they're two sides of the same cosmic coin, you know? Both flashing those mysterious lights at us saying, figure us out if you can. Exactly. And that's what ties them to so many other UFO sightings we hear about. There's this element of, I don't know, the unexplainable a refusal to play by the rules of what we think we know. Some things just don't fit neatly into a box labeled weather balloon or misidentified aircraft, no matter how much we want them to. Right. We can try to explain them away, but cases like Gulf Breeze, Roswell, they stick around. They linger in our minds because the pieces of the puzzle just don't quite fit, and that's what makes them so fascinating. Like those giant question marks hanging in the sky, <laughs> daring us to solve them. And you know me, I can't resist a good mystery. But is it more than just curiosity? What is it about these stories that keeps people so intrigued, even after all these years? You hit the nail on the head. It's like we're wired for this stuff, right? This deep-seated human need to explore, to push the boundaries of what we know. That idea that there might be something else out there, something beyond our current understanding. It's both exciting and a little bit terrifying, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. It's that feeling you get when you look up at a sky full of stars and it hits you, the sheer vastness of it all. There's a sense of wonder, for sure, but also this little voice whispering, what if? Yes, what if? It makes you acknowledge how huge the universe is, how much we don't know, and maybe even question our place in it all. Who knows, maybe someday we'll have concrete answers about Gulf Breeze, Roswell, the whole shebang. But until then, we have these stories, these mysteries that straddle that line between belief and skepticism, keeping us looking up, asking questions, and embracing that sense of wonder and the unknown that makes the universe so captivating. Couldn't have said it better myself. A huge thank you to Expert Speaker for venturing into this enigma with me. And to you, our amazing listeners, we want to hear from you. What do you think happened in Gulf Breeze? What explanation resonates most with you after all we've discussed? Head over to our website, shoot us an email, tweet us. We're dying to know your take. Until next time, keep exploring those cosmic questions. And remember, sometimes the most compelling answers are the ones we haven't quite figured out yet.